Hey guys, quick announcement. We just started a second YouTube channel called Ancient Presence Podcast, where we'll be posting our longer form podcast videos that we think are just too long to fit here on our main channel. And here we'll be posting little clips of those videos. We're very happy to start it off with the one and only Christopher Dunn and the Egyptian engineer Ahmed Adli, two engineers who we strongly disagree with on their views of ancient history, but with whom we still manage to have a very friendly and productive conversation. So we would love it if you guys could head over to the new channel and subscribe and hit the like button and all that stuff. It would really help us get that channel up and running. Uh, the link is down below and also up here in the corner. And of course, there you can find the full two hour podcast. So thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy the show. You know, after seeing um, scientists against myths create a core drill uh, with a spiral and after seeing Olga from scientists against myths make a diorite vase with a bone, like using bone, uh, and knowing that a spinning tube drill uh, with a weight will naturally create orthogonal angles. Uh, it will create 90 degree angles just on its own. Uh, what leads you to make the conclusion that a lost ancient high technology would be required to produce these when we're seeing, you know, these experiments by people who have ne don't have lineages of ancestry that have been practicing this, doing it on their first tries, basically, like, what is leading you to uh, think that uh, a lost technology is required to explain it? Um, well, the evidence as I have looked at it, and uh, the evidence as it has uh, been portrayed by others. Uh, I I have a difference of opinion in how um, a kind of a reverse engineering uh, project should uh, should should uh, proceed in terms of uh, well, let's put it this way. Uh, my company, the work, the company I work for, uh, a customer would bring in a a piece of an engine, and they would tell us, "I want, uh, I don't have any drawings on this, uh, but I I would want you to make one exactly like it." Okay. So basically, what we do is uh, we take it, we we subject it to uh, to measurements, uh, we you know, and uh, create drawings from from the, the original piece. And then we manufacture it. Uh, we send it to the customer. If it is, uh, there is just a little bit, um, then they would object, especially when it comes to precision. In terms of the feature core number seven, uh, I know that scientists against myth have uh, produced a core. And I know that they have claimed that that core is, has horizontal grooves on it. They've also made a claim that the Petri core has horizontal grooves on it and attempted to discredit the uh, both Petri and myself in our observations of, the, of that core. Okay, so we take that and then we take the uh the work of dennis stocks and you have you have his book i uh, have uh, no doubt and the articles that he published in the uh, ancient egypt magazine and <clears throat> uh, nowhere in his experimental drilling process or in the uh the lead up to it uh does he describe the uh core number seven in the petri museum even though he has, uh, he was aware of it. Uh, he cites Petrie in his book and in his articles. Uh, so, but why didn't he? Why didn't he actually present a photograph of that core before he did his uh, experiment? And why is he unwilling to put his core next to the original? so that a guy like me, a manufacturing engineer, can look at both of them and compare them to see if he had actually found a method that reproduced that original core. So a lot of confusion has been introduced. And I would uh, actually recommend that you, uh, you take a look at 
you take a look at the scientist against Smith. Uh, you have you read the uh, their paper on it? Yeah. Yeah. You have that paper. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, you, yeah, I, they send that paper to me, and uh, essentially, <clears throat> I I it fell apart uh, uh, after the second page. It was uh, I knew that it was. Uh, it was not uh it was not correct the methodology that they employed uh is not correct they took a 2d photograph of a 3d core and all the uh the drunken screw that petrie described just got a little drunker because of the uh corruption of the evidence see it's all about evidence and if you're going to change the evidence, then you, you lose your argument. The uh, <clears throat> the lines that they describe on a uh, you've got two things going for you there. You've got you've got the uh, the reduction of the uh, uh, of the the arc length. Uh, the chord length replaces the arc length when you're looking at it uh, on a if you lay them out right. And you've got a series of crowns. More, moreover, if you look at the uh, that that core uh, with the uh, from a, a 2D photograph, and you, you know you you looking at a cone actually, and depend you you focus your camera on the the center line that will appear horizontal, but for every line that goes up or every line that goes down, it begins to curve. Okay, that's a corruption of evidence. Uh, we do not, in manufacturing, we do not submit uh, 2D photographic evidence to describe geometric features to our customers. That method it would never be used because wait, of those. Wait, I'm sorry, though, but in your book, don't you show photos of the Ramsey statue and use use the same thing to compare the see, that's the that, you see that's the thing you, you, and uh you, you don't understand the differences between one uh circumstance and the other the the ramsey i'm just statue, trying to understand yeah. what you're saying because like no no i'm i'm, I'm yeah. going to explain it to yeah. you sorry um it's, it's two different things you see what in the ramsey statue and i i uh I say very clearly that these are preliminary studies, but basically what I'm doing is I'm I'm comparing the geometry uh, that appears from a photograph, uh, knowing that there could be distortions uh, of accuracy, and that uh, future future scans using 3D uh, photography would would be uh, necessary in order to know fully the the the, uh, the uh, accurate geometry of the piece but basically i'm comparing one side to another and so the distortions on on the, the same distortions on one side that are introduced by the camera whether it's the lens uh, of the camera or the lensing or whether it's the uh, the angle that you're on you know whether you're pointing a little up a little bit or down a little bit that all of that changes the geometry but it will be the same on both sides and so i'm just comparing one side to another okay okay uh with the when you're photographing a cone a 3d cone and you're applying uh geometry to the outside uh in manufacturing in the aerospace industry uh we have to i mean we we have to keep in mind all the time that uh, something that is laid flat and then wrapped into a cone, the geometry of any feature on the outside is going to change. And that's just the straight the pure geometry of it. Now, when you start taking 2D photographs of that cone, then you will get uh, cha other changes too. I will... Um, I'll send you. I'll send you uh, a package. It will be helpful, I think, for you to you not know, take my word for it. Um, it might be helpful for you to seek 
counsel from somebody else, uh, you know, maybe a trusted professor, maybe a scientist, a mathematician, engineer of your own choosing. Um, I think that would be very helpful to you. But uh, essentially, I would say that the uh, scientist against myth, even though they use uh, science in their in their title, um, the, 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 they may be scientists, but their methodology is is wrong. I I uh, guess like even if even if they're not producing the the same core structure like uh, spiral, uh, and their methodology is wrong, that they're still using primitive tools to reach. Uh, results that are in the ballpark of what we're seeing and to myself like can be ex like it's not a far leap to say that like generations of people that have been practicing this could do it with those same tools exponentially better and so i guess i still now, don't quite I know disagree. why I, I i i totally wholeheartedly disagree with that let's just give me a chance please here uh, so uh, the point is casey that you, you you say uh, a good statement like um, 30 minutes ago. You say that you notice that these artifacts can be done by by primitive tools. And uh, here we there is a basic question we we ask: What is the definition of done? Um, so how do you define done? Um, is it so core drills? This actually was uh, was was uh, in, in granite was done like in 1995 so no question about making a code drill with copper tools since since 30 years uh -huh. the question is what exactly is the features of this of this core so the the main feature if we if we make a, a code drill we have we must compare it with the original one and this is actually when when we when you you, you see the the the, uh, the the code drill even in in, in petri's petri's book Imagine that uh, a 2.5 millimeter with deviation uh, 0.25, if I remember correctly. So, and this is actually a turning point because he, um, how going, how are you going to reach these 2.5 millimeter? That's why Petri said you have to put about one ton of pressure on top. So it is not like if I did it today. Okay, then I'm closer. I will do it. To, it. It will give the same result because we are not following the the right approach. We need to think differently how we can reach these 2.5 millimeter. So, what what the problem? What what happened is that the the people are criticizing this 2.5 millimeter and said, no, it is not 2.5 millimeter. It is just whatever. It is just microns or so. Instead of trying to reach the artifact with the with the right quality and this is the definition of done with the right quality they are uh, criticizing the object itself we know that for example you, you go to memphis yeah? you went to memphis right uh, uh where the giant statue of Francis no we didn't we didn't no we didn't you didn't okay there is a box there is a box uh, a granite box that that we are 100 percent sure i think you will find also a picture in, in chris Dunn's book we are hundred, everyone is hundred percent sure that w this was done with the right balls, the right bound, and then you hit it because it is just uh, not not accurate, and you, you will notice it when, when you say it by yourself. So, when people say done, yeah, we know that many things can be done by that, but we we, we are not looking for it. We need to achieve the the high quality. Regarding your vas, uh, I would like also to to provide answers for for every point. Um, Regarding the vase, uh, the vase, um, it takes uh, or it took two years from two people. I really appreciate the work. Uh, Olga is amazing lady. They did, she did a lot of uh, a lot of a uh, lot of work. But we're talking about two years, two people to produce a fifteen centimeter vessel, which is even not complete because they are they didn't finish the polishing of it. So let's add like more six months for polishing or whatever. Then we are talking about 2.5 years with two people just for 15 centimeters. And by the way, we still didn't apply the proper measure for inside and outside using a scanning tool. It was just measuring using a ruler. I, I saw I saw the video. So it was not like uh, correctly assessed or at least the minimum assessment that we can say, okay, this is the method. 
I guess for me, it's like, it, you know, so, th these are their first attempts at making this. And the fact that they are getting it in basically the, the ballpark of what we're talking about is not a testament to like, you know, the, that the, that there was power tools used, but just that they, this is the, the first iteration without having a whole lineage of knowledge of how to do it. Uh, th so that's my, I guess, thought on that. The word power tools. Can I jump in here too, guys? I want to, I want to share a few thoughts if you don't mind. I, I think that what, what you're, what Ahmed and Chris, what you're saying is that, uh, some of these primitive, uh, um, experiments are not producing uh artifacts that are as precise as what you are measuring the in features. ancient egypt and the features so we need to we need to look at the features that are the most precise uh, from an engineering perspective the most high quality the the best 90 degree orthogonal angles and perfectly flat surfaces and geometrically um symmetrical you know artifacts and so what i would say to address that is that from an extended last years and years and years of continual research from many different people, uh, from what I can witness, the precision is not very evident in the boxes in the Serapium. Uh, Chris, for example, you've measured one box. Uh, there's 24 total boxes. And I have a whole slideshow that we could look at. And unfortunately, you say you don't have enough time right now to look at it. So I would love to perhaps go through that. I mean, all this stuff could take hours to talk about, but I've seen uh, many different photos that I can show you using, in one case, actually on the NEXT tour with you, Chris, uh, your precision uh, square in the box with NEXT inside filming and they put it up and, and you can see gaps of light shining be underneath the surface where it's not, it, it's very clearly not a, as precise as perfect orthogonal angles. 